my name is Kofi, and Kofi just means born on Friday, Friday born. Do you have like your birth name, and then you have a name that is designated on like the day of the week that you're born. So Justin is my name, but Kofi is also what people call me. Am I looking here? Am I looking at you? Okay. It was February 2001 was when we moved to the States. I was really young, so I don't know exactly what the process was, but my dad joined the U.S. military, like the Navy, before I was even born. So for me, um, I missed a lot of Justin's childhood. Um, okay, so I went home in 96. Right, yes. And then he was born in July of 97. I didn't see him until September, or August or September of 1998. And I grew up mainly on the military base, so that's how I saw everything. I just assumed that everyone's parents were in the military for the longest time until we moved out of there. That's me. No, that's me. That's you. That's Jane. That's oh, God. This one is not clear. Not clear. Yeah, we're very like traditional Ghanaians. Like, we still speak the language. We eat the food. We, we celebrate certain things that are celebrated in my country. The last time I went back was um, June 2007, and I had my 10th birthday over there. And when I went back, it was like another one of those culture shock experiences where I was like, I knew where I came from and I remember it at home, but just seeing it from perspective of living in the States and going back, I was just very humbled and like overwhelmed with where like my roots are and where most of my family lives. We, we come from a very small town in Virginia, a small country. And I say that we had a privilege to, to move here to make our lives better. Um, there is a maxim in our language that says people who were born onto a mountain have no problem becoming tall, but they were already at the mountain. And if we were born in the valley, then you have to grow to, to become taller than the one who was in the mountain. Yeah. Sunday after church. When I first moved here, like the biggest thing was kind of like the social atmosphere, the social skills, because the way people interact here is different than over there. But at first, when I first came here, I didn't, it was hard for me to like make friends and stuff. I was very quiet and to myself. What I saw even at that tender age was whenever he had music played, you know, he would start like dancing you know, something like that. I got really into it. So I don't even know how old I was. My mom bought me like a keyboard and we set it up like with the rest of the church band and I would just like play around while the church is, like band is playing. His first toe was a little piano and the first time he got it that very day, he took everything apart because he wanted to know why it was making the different noises it was, I guess that's what he was trying to do. And sometimes he would try to knock on uh, pots and cans just, you know, to make noise about it. And I just started just hitting things, and then that's how I got into playing the drums. And then later on, I started picking up more and more instruments. I want to say, like, around the third grade is when I was like, yeah, like, I'm going to be a rock star when I grow up. He was so much in the music that when we go to church, he, if you don't let him sit with the, the instrumentalist, he will make noise the whole time. I feel like everyone in my family expected me to, coming from being the noisy kid and banging and everything and playing with any instrument I can get my hands on. I started making like beats seventh, eighth grade, and then in high school is when I started putting stuff out. I didn't put my name on it. I didn't 
share it with anyone. I just put music out on the internet. I put out um, like a remix of a song called Situations. I just flipped it and turned it into my own thing. I dropped an album in May and I dropped an EP in August. And I spent majority of last year and towards the end of high school working on the album. Just like making sure that everything was the way I wanted it to be when it came to like the sequencing of it, people I wanted involved with it, and there's a story behind it that's like very like personal to me. And I just wanted to make sure I told it right. Like I had an idea of like of the concept that I wanted, but I didn't know how I was gonna go about it. And then I came across this story online and the story was called It's Beautiful and that's what I named the album. And then I went back to the studio, changed up a bunch of things in those songs that I created, and then made it geared towards that story. Music. Some days I'm just sitting there, I'm like, I'm gonna make a song today. Other days it's like, I have a song that's been going through my head the entire day, and it's like, all right, I need to get this out. I'll see something that's like, that makes me think about this, or makes me think about this sound, and I'm gonna try to, you know, manipulate that or um, illustrate that when I get to my like desk or something like that. I know he's interested in film and fashion and he's really creating a new frontier for himself. Music now isn't just music. Like there's people are making visual albums. I feel like I'm surrounded by so many different people who, are, who have so many different mediums, where it's visually and sonically, whatever, like I want to make sure that I can express that and put that stuff out there. He will be making something different because he thinks so much differently than other people. I like to make sure that people know that it's all genuine, all from me, all from the heart. Yeah, I feel that's important. Thank you.